Let's say you have a satellite and it is orbiting a uh, planet like Earth. Um, now, uh, as it orbits, um, the reason that it orbits is that it experiences a gravitational force. Um, and the force uh, is equal and opposite to the force that the Earth experiences as well. It's a gravitational force and it's equal and opposite because of Newton's third law. So uh, that force depends on the mass of the planet, big M, the mass of the satellite, little m, uh, the inverse of the square of their separation, which is the distance from the centre of the planet to the satellite, and also the gravitational constant. Uh, now, that force uh, depends on both the mass of the planet and the mass of the satellite, and that's the same as if you were standing on the surface of the Earth next to an African elephant and um, you would experience a different force than the elephant because uh, you have a different mass. So the elephant is going to experience a bigger gravitational force, the elephant is going to have a bigger weight. Um, however, we also know that uh, force divided by mass uh, is equal to acceleration. And uh, that's the same here. So we can do the force on the object, like the elephant, for example, divided by the mass of the elephant is going to give an acceleration. And that ac if that force is a gravitational force, then that acceleration is a gravitational acceleration, which we call g, which is also equal to the gravitational field strength. Um, and because we've done this f divided by this m, we now get g as g m over r squared. So notice that it no longer depends on the mass of the satellite or the person or the elephant. It only depends on the mass of the planet. And you see that if you dropped a, a feather or a feather and a, and a bowling ball or a feather and a bowling ball and the African elephant. Um, and you would see that because they would, in a vacuum, if we dropped those guys, then they would all accelerate at the same rate and they would all hit the ground at the same time. So the gravitational acceleration or the gravitational field strength only depends on the mass of the planet and not on the mass of the individual object. Now, we can also look at the, uh, the, the force in a slightly different way. And if we look at our, our satellite as an example, the satellite is orbiting the Earth and that means that it's moving in a circle. So if it's moving in a circle, then we know it's experiencing a centripetal force. And the centripetal force is equal to mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius of that orbit or of that circular motion. Now, looking at our satellite, we know that that centripetal force must be being provided by gravity. There isn't a big rope holding a satellite in place. There isn't friction. It must be provided exclusively by gravity. And we know what that gravitational force is. It's gm over r squared. So the force is m the centripetal force is mv squared over r. mv squared over r is being provided by the gravitational force. So that's gmm over r squared. Now we can do some cancelling there. So I'm going to cancel the little m's for starters. I'm going to cancel this r and this one of these r's. And so I end up with an equation for velocity, and that's the orbital velocity, the velocity at which the satellite is moving around the Earth, which is the square root of g m over r. Notice again that there is no little m. These little m's have cancelled, so it doesn't matter the mass of the satellite or the elephant or the bowling ball or the feather. They could all be in orbit together all going around the planet and they would orbit at the same velocity. So because there's no little m in this equation, this orbital velocity equation, that means that no matter what you had here, if you had a person or the elephant, they would all be orbiting at the same orbital velocity because it doesn't matter what the mass of the individual object is, it only matters the mass of the planet and how far away you are from the planet for the orbital velocity to change.